Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. And in this video, we're going to look at stairs once again, but we're going to look at specifically spiral stairs and how to model them because it's really important. You know, maybe something you see more in residential, but nonetheless, it'd be great to be able to know how to do that, whether you're doing residential or commercial projects. So if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button and consider subscribing. It really helps me out a lot. Okay. So in my previous stair videos, which I would highly recommend you check out before this one, not necessarily that it's completely important, but do that because it has some decent information. Um, we looked at a lot of different things, type and instance parameters, how to model stairs by sketch and just model basic stairs. But now we're going to look at modeling spiral stairs. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just simply draw a line down here. So we get an idea of what we're doing with what we're working with. Okay. So, here at the top, I've got a couple choices, actually. I've got spiral, which is a full step spiral, and then I have a center ends spiral. And so what is the difference? Because if I click on this one, and you can see it is making a spiral stair. And likewise, if I click on the second one here, it is going to appear to be the exact same way. And so uh, what's the difference here? Well, the main difference is that the full step spiral is going to allow me to go more than 360 degrees with my entire stair. Now, if I want to do that with a center in spiral, I wouldn't be able to do that. I'd have to actually break it up into sections. So at that point, you definitely would want to use the full spiral because that would allow you to go beyond 360. So that said, if I don't go beyond 360, like you see here, I go from the full to just the center, I, it, they look the same. They act the same. They function the same because I'm not going beyond 360. So I will say before I even model a stair, uh, the, the difference between them obviously is the number of degrees. And so if you're not going beyond 360 degrees, then just use the center in spiral. It's going to work out a lot better and just be easier because it's not going to try and go past 360, things like that. So let's go and start with that. And I want to make my actual, actual run width at three is great. So I've got this line here because I want to start here at this endpoint and I want to have a consistent place to start and start my stair. And so I want this to be at the bottom. And you can see as I move this out, the radius changes. And it obviously changes because I started the radius based on that endpoint of the line. And I'm drawing my location line of the stairs is the run center. Now, maybe I don't want this. Maybe I want this to be my exterior support left, which is the complete left side. And so that means that I have a little more control over where I have the left side ending up, which is great. And I like this because you can see the radius is actually ending up at the very edge of the stair, which basically tells me how much openness I have uh, in the middle of the stair, which is great. And so obviously all this works. And so maybe we want to go for something that is about five feet, and we'll get there in just a second. But after I draw the radius, then I have to determine how many of these risers I'm going to draw because that's very important. Now, for the sake of this first one, let's just go ahead and draw all of them in. I can then click on my run, my entire stair, and you can see my radius is different because it's looking at the run in particular. If I click on the support, I don't have that anymore, uh, which is just too bad. Now, let's go ahead and finish this. Once this finishes, I can click on this here. And I'm going to then actually dimension my radius. So radial here, I'll click on that support, and then boom, there's my radius, which we know. But then I can click on my stair, and I again, I want to make this five feet. If I make this five feet, mm, nothing happens. Well, that's just the way it is. So how do I actually do this? Well, I'm going to have to go into the stair itself, which I guess you could say makes sense, um, because, of course, I want to edit that. And so I don't see that anywhere in the instance parameters. I don't see it absolutely anywhere. But what I can do, again, is come to annotate and then draw my radius. And let's go ahead and click that radius there. And this is the exact same thing we just saw. So obviously that did not work. And I can click on this exterior support all day, change this dimension. It just won't work. And why is that? Well, it's because this dimension that I have floating here is based on the center of the stair, where the original location line of that stair was. So let's go ahead and start over because this didn't take long. I'm gonna draw another stair here. And instead of exterior support left, I'm gonna choose the run center again. And so again, I'm gonna choose this as my center point and then we'll just draw this right there, that's great. 
I'll, I'll include all of my risers and that's great. Okay, I'm, I'm good, but now you can see that input that I put in there is this value. And so now I feel very confident in being able to put in five feet and then that's good. That's it right there. So you will notice that because I changed the radius, the stair, the whole stair changed. And so what do we have to do? Well, there's a reason that I wanted to draw this line and start this stair based on this central location. Basically, this is going to be the center of my radius regardless, which means because now I'm I, all I need to do is simply rotate this. Once I get the dimension that I need to the center of the stair, then I can easily come back here and then rotate it back exactly the way I need it. Cool. That's what I need. That's really great. And so that's going to be what I want. So knowing this is five feet to the center of the stair, maybe like I said in the beginning, we actually want five feet to be the radius of the open area in the middle of the stair. How would we do that? Well, we know here, if I click on the stair run, I can see the actual run width is three feet. We're very familiar with that because that's the default. And then if I click on the support, it is two inches. So putting that together, I've got a total here of three feet, four inches. So if I divide that in half, then I have one foot eight. And so I basically need to add that to this dimension. And so I can simply come in here to this dimension, go to the front, add an equals, and then plus one foot eight. And then press enter, and there we go. Now, obviously, I need to rotate this again, but that's very easy to do. And cool, we're good. We have the 6A. That's what we expect. We press OK. And now, as soon as I go into my dimension and add it, we should be able to see a solid five foot radius there in the middle. And look at that. I'm very happy with this. This is totally what I want. So with this, you know, maybe we don't care about that, but with this, it's let's say it's modeled in the right place and everything, and we're happy. Well, everything that I've covered in previous videos will now apply because like this, I see I have desired number of rises, I have the base level, top offset, of course, facing, everything like that. And then I have the type and this, these, we've seen this in previous videos. It's all the exact same. It's just a different way of modeling the stair because it's round in this case. That's very simple. Um, but let's actually look at the stair run and make sure that's all the same. Well, look, I can begin or end with the riser. Of course, we're used to seeing that. And then my location line, yes, yes, all very similar, if not the exact same. Of course, my materials are here in the type properties. Yes, we're very used to seeing this, which is great. Okay, so cool. This is, that's totally what we would expect to see. Um, now, now that this is round, I can even do something weird and decide, well, maybe I want this to go up an extra 10 feet. Well, I have to add another stair or do something else and maybe i want this just to be a straight run stair and I, I just have it over here you can see it immediately draws in that automatic landing which is totally awesome and it integrates just directly with the fact that i've already drawn a spiral stair like you might think oh how would i do this normally but you know it's smart and let's say this is just gone you know i, I put this over here i want to rotate this kind of some random dimension and it's going to be here. Well, like I said, I've covered this in previous videos, but it works the exact same with round stairs. I can just simply add a landing like that right there, and it's going to totally work regardless of where I put them. It's just, that's just the way it is. It's really cool. Okay, so with this, let's go ahead and come to the other end, and I will finish that stair. Let's go ahead and make another one. In this case, we're going to have it be a full, a full 360, and not only we're going to make it a full 360, but we're going to make it more than that. Ooh, it's going to be really fun. So coming in here to stair. And then I'm going to use my full step spiral. Again, I'm going to have an actual run width of three feet, making sure my automatic landing is there. I'm going to go ahead and keep my location line center because we're probably going to have to go back and rotate the stair to get it where I want. But we're going to start at this side. And let's go ahead and actually... You can see I have the ability to have it, assuming that my radius is big enough for the stair run, accounting for that, then I can go past the 360. You can see that where the top is. Actually, if I keep uh, the base here, you can see where the top is, and it's overlapping, which is great. Now, to make this a little more dramatic, let's go ahead and make this top offset an extra 20 feet. So this is a 30-foot stair. Now, Please don't do this in real life, <laughs> but I'm going to draw this here. We can see how many times this can go around in a circle to get me up the 30 feet that I'm looking looking for. And so again, maybe we want a, a bit of a tighter interior, um, maybe something more like two feet. 
Well, I can click this and <laughs> ugh, what a mess this is. So how would we deal with this? Well, like I said before, because the stair run is three feet and everything's the same, all I need to do is change this, uh, this value here from my three feet and add that addi additional one foot eight. So it's basically four foot eight. If I want to have it be five feet, um, obviously if I want it to be two feet, we can see where it is now and then go from there. So I've got my radius. My radius is that dimension. I'll click on my stair run and I don't have the option of changing that. But if I click on my exterior and I want this to be two feet, obviously again, I don't have that option. It's gonna have to be something that I do in the stair. Um, but this is another reason why I might actually draw this line and literally place it based on a line or some sort of a reference plane or something before I even go to this trouble because I'm gonna delete this and draw another one here. So if I simply change this to exterior support left and then I draw in and I know I want two feet, I can come out and we can obviously see, look at this, you know, I'm, I'm getting exact numbers. So there's my two feet right there. Now, if I have this line, I'm going to get just every other dimension in between all of them. So we're, we'll have to basically just use this line in the end to rotate our stair, which is totally fine. So I can see here, look, two feet. Awesome. That's great. So uh, where is my one? Well, it's my first one right there. So I can simply rotate this right here and go, ta-da. So look at that. I'm, I'm really pleased with that. And right now, again, if I go ahead and check and make sure that my radius is what I expect. It totally is right there, two feet, awesome. So <laughs> let's look at these um, and we can finish this stair and we can see, yeah, this is, again, this is gonna act exactly like every other stair that we've modeled in other videos, but just like the spiral stair that we modeled that was not 360 degrees, yeah, that's totally fine. But also we get these, you know, lines overlapping, of course, because the thing's going over and around itself. Well. Also, just like before, if I edit the stair and I decide, well, you know, actually, I want the stair to go up another 10 feet, we can do the exact same thing we did with this regular spiral stair, whether it goes 360 or not, we can just draw another run in here. And look, it's going to automatically draw that run in based on where I have this in, which is great. This, that's totally what I want. You know, obviously, it makes sense to have it in certain places, you know, uh, it may or may not work here. Maybe it will, maybe not, but you totally see that, you know, that's going to work just fine. And that, you know, it does work. It's automatic. I can do the same thing. So it performs the exact same way, which is awesome. And looking at this stair, I see no new instance parameters here. Uh, the type is all the same. It's again, it's the pulling from the exact same stair, that two inch tread, one inch nose. That's very, that's a default stair basically. So just know it's all the same. It's just how you literally initially draw it. So that's really interesting. Just know that uh, I cannot end up converting this to a sketch. And that may or may not be because it's beyond 360 and like how would you actually draw a sketch of that in 2D? But look at this stair. I can convert that one, of course. So let's go over here to my non-360 stair, my center ending stair. And let's see if we can convert that to a sketch. My guess is yes, we can. And this is the type of thing that I think I mentioned in that video to where if you want to convert or if you want to draw stairs that, you know, that are based on a sketch, totally start with drawing them as an actual stair first and then just convert it. So look, I can convert this. It becomes a sketch. And now I have a round, a rounded stair that I can edit the sketch. And it's real easy to do. Now, I don't want to keep this because I don't like stairs by sketch if I don't have to. But yeah, that's great. So finally, what we can do is go to 3D and see what the heck this looks like. So obviously, this is very absurd, and it may not be the type of thing that you want, but it, it works great. Like the railings, like everything operates the exact same when it comes to uh, these different spiral stairs. Whether you're going 360 or not, it really is all the same. Now, now all of this to say, this has nothing to do with the code of any of these types of stairs because there is specific code to certain dimensions and their widths and all of that that have to come into play. And believe me, I'm going to make a separate stair code video that covers all of this. So don't worry, that will be coming out in the future that will cover it all because this is, you know, it is what it is. And all this video was serving to do is to show you how to model it. So you'll have to worry about the radius and all of that diameter yourself. 
because you'll probably need something specific like we worked out here. But my hope is that this video gave you an idea not only how to integrate these, but just simply model them and worry about the diameters in the middle and using that, that reference line that we drew within the stair. It was very easy to do. So we will cover everything else about stairs in the future video. So if you learned something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also consider subscribing. That does as well. And, and definitely stick around for other Rev videos and more specifically more stair videos. If you're curious on what we need to do with code and you know calculating stair width and like all of that, we'll cover that later. So do not worry. I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching.